this bed is about to fall, so I'm going to make this video quickly with the concern for my safety. Granted, if this bed falls, I will probably make about a million views or a hundred thousand views from the disaster, and then people will find out that I'm a racist dick, and it'll all go down hope from there. But, aside from all that bullshit, let's talk about wrestling storylines. With wrestling storylines, at the very least, I'm talking about the WWF, you could tell a linear story or a circular story. A story that can basically repeat itself again and again and again. Or one of those stories that has a standard beginning, middle, end. Stag Daddy talks about this with the Hogan vs. Andre feud, with the Bret Hart vs. Owen Hart feud, with essentially, I guess, the Stone Cold vs. Vince feud. All these feuds that they had their climaxes and they had their closures. They had a beginning, a middle, and an end. What the WWE does now is pretty simple. Because it's getting easier for us to voice our opinions on the internet now that social networking is readily available. We have our smartphones. We have our apps. We have our... We have all this stuff. Essentially, social networking sites are becoming dumbed down, and instead of being about small circles like they used to be, they're more about big chains. We got people who are trying to be Facebook famous, Instagram famous, Tumblr famous, and uh, Twitter famous, doing the same shit everyone else does. And then here comes a possible member of the IWC saying the same shit everyone else says. And WWE can use this as a sort of economic tell. Where they can respond to the environment, the economic environment, make their decisions that way. They can see supply and demand. Okay, there's a big demand for... In 2011, there was a big demand for Zack Ryder because the Ryder Revolution was something he created. It was grassroots. We started getting into it. We're thinking, oh, wow, this guy's funny. His dad jerks off to John Morrison. He's got that Molina... What was it? Like a... I don't know what they call that. It's not a blow-up doll, although that would be funny. I'd totally get one. It's that cardboard cutout thing. Yeah. He basically... Just all these things, him wanting to get John Cena on his show. And then in the summer, you started introducing it. Once Triple H becomes a kayfabe COO, eventually... You have him in title matches for the U.S. belt. He eventually wins the title in TLC and gets a big pop. Keep in mind, Survivor Series, people are saying we want Ryder and shit like that. Kind of like they're saying with Daniel Bryan right now. The only difference is Ryder didn't have as much talent as Daniel Bryan. And he doesn't have a long-standing indie following. It's more of a grassroots internet social networking following. So after you give him the title, he loses it very quickly after you notice a tremendous, like half a million drop in views or two million or something like that from a shitty ass storyline between him, his love interest, which was Eve Torres, and Kane. I can't make this shit up. You brought Kane back in a mask and had him torment Zack Ryder. I made him a cripple. 
How are you a Guido and a cripple at the same time, man? That's that's reason enough to consider suicide. Although, if there is a person watching this that is a Guido and a cripple, I'm not encouraging you to do so. I'm saying this as a disclaimer right now because I don't want any legal action taken against me. That's all good and all. That's all sweet and dandy, but... What you're doing with Daniel Bryan is very similar because... You gave us the instant gratification. And from there on, you forgot what to do with it. What were you going to do with Zack Ryder and Kane? You had them have a couple of matches afterwards in pay-per-view during the spring. And that's about it. You had nothing to do with Ryder. You had no ideas. You made him change up his gimmick into God knows what he's bigger now, you know, fatter, grew out his hair, uh, doesn't wear his sunglasses anymore, he, but he's not that different, you didn't really make him a new character, you just got rid of Z True Long Island story, and you didn't progress from there. With Daniel Bryan, on the other hand, you made him feud with the Wyatts, because the Wyatts had no direction to, as a punishment because SummerSlam didn't get as much pay-per-view buy rates as expected, and he was in the main event against Cena, so someone had to take the heat. thing is, it gave us instant gratification in a way. This is instantly a good way to make people pop. You know they love these this guy, Daniel Bryan. And then, you didn't know what to do with that. So you had him lose the title to Orton, cashing in his Money in the Bank contract. A uh, new heel Orton. Which I do appreciate, Orton needs to be a heel. Uh, had him, had Daniel Bryan win the title back again. Only to have it vacated. Stripped away from him. Gave him a match with no results. This is where the storyline went from great to shit. And then... You had Shawn Michaels screw him over as a special guest referee, which... That is kind of what you use Shawn Michaels for. Since you're not gonna have him be... The heartbreak kid anymore. You're not gonna have him be the pretty boy since he's not that anymore. He's a miserable ex-junkie. That's really what Shawn Michaels' character has been for a decade and a half, ever since... Ever since... Y'all niggas brought him back in... Well, ever since you've been using him in 99. You really don't know how to make him a pretty boy anymore. He's himself now, that's what he plays. It's kind of what PS Power said. And RIP to him, I don't know where the fuck he is. Hopefully he comes back in a near distant future. <clears throat> so you go from storylines with decent beginning as a climax and some actual closure classics and now you're having this instant gratification shit where you know this guy's over, so you're gonna give us a toss us a bone. And then after that, uh I don't know. And, really, I'm not going to complain about it too hard, because consequences showcase that viewers do drop when you do lose direction with your characters. It's happened all the time. Anytime the WWE drops in viewers significantly, is because somebody fucked up with a guy's push. They gave him a belt and for instant gratification to get the fans happy and they didn't know what to do after that. And because of this, I really hope that if you guys are going to continue doing this, and I know you guys are going to do this, find a way to... I guess, 
soften the fall because there will be a fall if you give a guy instant gratification as a push, an instant gratification push. I've said that word like 20 times, and then you don't do anything with him. You're going to get the same results, and you need something to soften up those drops in viewers. Maybe bring back a superstar if you're going to give this guy a big ass push and then do nothing afterwards. Like, wouldn't it be awesome if right after Zack Ryder did all that free shit with Eve Torres and Kane, you had The Rock come out then, or you had Undertaker come out then, you had Jericho come out then, but Jericho was trying to get himself heat by staying silent for a while, so I wouldn't consider that worthy enough, or worthy enough, fuck. I'm working on my speech impediments, guys, so this is Mr. Waka7, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and suck my dick.